I really never thought I would be doing what I do today for a living, especially with global celebrities that I grew up watching as a kid. Uh, so it's kind of a, a crazy experience, a little surreal. My background's actually kind of boring to how I ended up getting here. Uh, I started in software development in 1999, uh, kind of right at the beginning of Y2K. Uh, and out of Y2K really was born global outsourcing to a certain extent. That was when the Indian global outsourcing market kind of really expanded and became, you know, the driving force that it is today. So I was, I wanted to be a software developer. I wanted to actually be, I wanted to be, you know, a VB developer back in the day. And I just thought that would be the greatest thing in the world. So I got into software um, and I ended up getting into operations and then sales. Uh, I did really, really well in software development. I ended up working specifically for Indian centric outsourcing companies, like I said, that were born out of Y2K uh, and spent 17 years uh, basically traveling back and forth to India. Uh, I lived in Hyderabad uh, as an executive uh, when we were doing an IPO for GSS Infotech. Uh, and then I ended up in Atlanta, Georgia uh, with my kids. And around 2012, uh, I heard of this thing called Bitcoin. And that effectively changed my life forever after that. So, you know, after getting involved in Bitcoin, then it, uh, Ethereum came along. And then I, I realized the power of smart contracts, which uh, I think ultimately, you know, led to my fascination with cryptocurrency. And then once I started getting involved in Ethereum, you know, as an investor and, and just really as a passive participant, I really started to think about how this could help businesses and entrepreneurs and what were they all all the possibilities so I kind of drank the Kool-Aid as they say and then started getting involved in the ICO space if you remember when Bitcoin made its bull run you know to 20,000 most people had not heard of Bitcoin and then all of a sudden it was all over the media and people were doing token offerings and you know everyone was doing an ICO well I was heavily involved in that so I was on a plane every 10 days to a different country for about two years. Uh, it was a very uh, amazing and interesting time in my life. I was in Seoul, Singapore, Hong Kong, Dubai, Tokyo, London, Zurich, uh, pretty much just hopping all over the globe, living in permanent jet lag, either speaking about practical applications of blockchain, tokenizing projects. Uh, I was advising uh, offerings. Uh, just completely caught up in this entire world of cryptocurrency and leveraging uh, tokens as, a, as another uh, capital source for projects. So we ended up setting up an office in Central and Hong Kong and started deploying capital into media and tech. Uh, I kind of got involved in private equity for a little while uh, and venture capital. And during that process, you know, we were doing pretty well. We started deploying capital into media projects in Los Angeles. At that time, I met a woman by the name of Sophie Watts. Sophie's uh, very well known for being one of the only females to ever co-found or start a movie studio called STX Entertainment. And STX is, uh, uh, at the time when she exited, was worth about two and a half billion. They, you know, they made Bad Moms. They made Hustlers with Jennifer Lopez you know, a pretty significant size studio in Los Angeles. I met Sophie and we became venture partners and friends. And then I ended up moving to Los Angeles. So at that time, my life was still pretty, other than the whole crypto craziness, was still not uh, dealing with celebrities every day. And then Sophie called me last year and said, hey, I have all of these celebrities calling me about NFTs and you're my crypto guy. You, you, you know what NFTs are. And how can we do something in this space? And I remember really significantly, this was right when NFTs started to become culturally relevant in the media, especially, you know, in North America. You had Gronk, Patrick Mahomes, you know, Paris Hilton did her, her big drop. Uh, and they were getting a lot of exposure. People, everyone was talking about NFTs. So we originally toyed around with the idea of creating a platform you know, like an open sea or an eternity or a mintable, but having lived through all of the craziness of crypto in 2017 and seeing the fragments of how fragmented the actual 
um, crypto market was in the exchange market, I said, let's create a creative agency. Um, let's not compete with institutional money trying to create platforms. Let's create a creative agency and effectively sell picks and shovels, right? So during a gold rush, that's usually a safe bet. So I kind of felt that that was the case. So again, I took a, I took a different approach than most of my peers. Uh, we didn't invest in technology first. We invested in legal. Uh, the reason we invested in legal first was because if you have, if you're familiar at all with the entertainment industry, every piece of IP or every, you know, every celebrity or talent has a circle of agents, managers, and lawyers that just circle around their whole ecosystem. So knowing that, because I had dabbled in entertainment already, I knew that we would have to go through a huge amount of red lines and contract negotiations to acquire IP. And that most of my friends or my competitors wouldn't be thinking like that. They'd be focused on developing smart contracts and platforms. Uh, and I wanted to acquire IP. So we spent really the first six months of our business just doing a land grab, you know, just papering up contracts with some of the biggest brands and names in the world. Mike Tyson being our, our first customer. Then, you know, Dennis Rodman, Wesley Snipes, the Joe Frazier estate, um, Odell Beckham Jr., Albert Einstein, Charlie Chaplin, the Wright brothers. Um, so we just kept layering more IP and more IP. Um, we went through a capital raise. We raised a seed round. And then it was interesting because then I had all these investors and all these IP and people now were like, OK, you have to actually, you know, you got to drop an NFT now, Jeff, because you've raised money and you've got all this IP, but we have to actually do something. So our first customer that we launched was Mike Tyson. And uh, we did the Mike Tyson, Corey Van Lu collaboration, which if, if you're familiar with the NFT space was wildly popular. Um, I think it was a mix of right time, right place, but also I feel like I had a very specific opinion and stuck to it. And I think sometimes in business, you have to be willing to just do that. You know, I... Uh, Having spent a decade in crypto and considering myself part of this community, uh, I really focused on bringing Mike into the space in kind of the most organic and authentic way possible, partnering with an up and coming artist. You know, Corey went on to do amazing things at Sotheby's and, you know, has become a, a blue chip world class artist in his own right. But, you know, Corey was just really starting to get popular when we partnered with him for Mike. And I don't think people expected us to take Mike Tyson and do color palette of pink and blue. Uh, so it was against the norm. You know, everybody was doing really low hanging, obvious kind of sports card stuff. And we took a more artistic approach with Mike. We ended up doing a uh, million dollars in sales in the first 30 minutes. Uh, and then we woke up the next day and, and something crazy had happened. Uh, we had done over 15 million in secondary sales and we none of us expected that. And it was really a testament to the power of the NFT community in the market, right? In the, uh, the, the consumption of collectors for content. A, a lot of videos got made of people buying NFTs from Mike's collection for $900 and selling them for $30,000 the same day. So uh, a bunch of those videos went viral on TikTok, you know, kids, teenagers, 20 year old kids buying something for a thousand dollars and then paying off their college tuition the next day. Um, so it was really, a, as an entrepreneur, it was a fun to be part of that entire process. So then we dropped another collection for my, did a million dollars in 23 minutes, the laser eyes derivative. And now we're on Mike's fourth drop. We built a trading card game for him on Solana called iron pigeons. We're doing a drop on Binance with them. And then we started dropping other collections for other clients, uh, Paradigm Sports. Uh, we did a drop for, we created our own blockchain racing company called Reactor Motors, sold almost 9,000 NFTs in four days, gave away a custom McLaren 570S supercar to one of the community members. Um, we just did a charity drop for Ukraine with Vladimir Klitschko and Wisby, the artist. Um, we just dropped a collection for authentic brand groups for Terry O'Neill. Um, we're dropping Dennis Rodman later this month. So we're, we're heavily involved in the space. I think we're going on our 10th drop now, which is a lot considering we just launched the company last March.